For decades, creatine has been sold as a muscle supplement for guys in the gym. But here's the thing, most women don't realize that creatine might be even more important for them. Not just for strength, but for energy, mood, sleep, and even pregnancy and menopause. In this episode, I'm breaking down the surprising science of creatine for women, what it really can do, what the myths get wrong, and how to use it in the right way in every stage of life. All right, so let's talk about creatine. If you're a woman and you've heard of it at all, chances are you picture a tub of white powder next to a barbell marketed to guys trying to bulk. And yet, study after study is now showing that creatine can do a lot more than just help you crank out an extra few reps at the gym. For women in particular, creatine supports not just muscles, but also the brain, mood, sleep quality, bone health, and even pregnancy outcomes. And here's a key fact. Research shows women naturally produce about 20% less creatine than men, and also tend to eat 30 to 40% less dietary creatine, because it's mostly found in meat and fish. That alone means women start at a lower baseline, so the potential benefit of supplementation might actually be greater for women. And it gets even more interesting. Hormonal fluctuations throughout the menstrual cycle, pregnancy, and menopause also influence how your body uses and stores creatine. So while men have dominated the conversation around this supplement, the emerging science says women might need it even more. So let's break down what creatine does in a woman's body, beyond just muscle, and how to actually use it wisely. So first, let's start with the obvious, muscle. Creatine is stored in your muscles as phosphocreatine, which basically acts like a backup battery for quick bursts of energy. That's why it helps you lift heavier, sprint faster, and recover better from high-intensity workouts. But here's the part that many people miss. Women benefit just as much as men from creatine. In fact, trials going back to the 1990s showed that sedentary women who took creatine and did resistance training gained more strength and lean mass than those training alone. And even for women in their 50s and 60s, creatine combined with resistance training led to better strength, more lean tissue, and improved functional performance. Things like chair stands and grip strength. So whether you're 25 and training for a marathon or 65 and trying to maintain independence, creatine helps you train harder and hold on to muscle. And to address the worry, no, it does not make women bulky. You'll gain strength and lean mass, but women simply don't produce enough testosterone to blow up like a bodybuilder. So here's where things get even more interesting. Creatine isn't just for your muscles. Your brain uses a ton of energy and creatine helps fuel it. A systematic review of 23 trials found that creatine improved memory in older adults. In sleep-deprived people, creatine improved reaction time and reduced mental fatigue. And in vegetarians, who tend to have lower creatine levels, supplementation improved working memory and intelligence test scores. For women specifically, there's a growing interest in whether creatine can help with perimenopausal brain fog postpartum mental fatigue, or even protect against cognitive decline later in life. The research here is newer, but the logic is sound. By keeping brain cells better fueled, creatine may help with memory and focus during periods of stress or hormonal change. And another area where women are uniquely affected, mood. So women are about twice as likely as men to experience depression, and hormonal fluctuations often play a role. There's early evidence that creatine can augment antidepressant effects in women, one randomized trial found that women with depression who added creatine to their SSRI medication improved faster and more completely than with medication alone. Researchers believe that by boosting cellular energy in the brain and possibly enhancing serotonin function, creatine helps stabilize mood, especially during vulnerable times like postpartum or perimenopause. And even in healthy women, some report feeling less fatigued and more resilient on creatine. Now let's talk sleep. Proper sleep is critical for everything, mood, metabolism, hormone balance. Women, especially around menstruation, pregnancy, and menopause, often struggle with sleep. And while creatine isn't a sedative, some research suggests it helps your body recover better, which can improve sleep drive. In a 2024 study, women who took creatine and lifted weights daily actually slept longer on training days than those who didn't supplement. And in sleep-deprived settings, creatine improved alertness and cognitive performance. So while it's not a direct sleep aid, it seems to support better sleep quality indirectly by improving recovery and buffering fatigue. And bone health deserves its own mention. After menopause, women lose bone density quickly, increasing fracture risk. Creatine doesn't replace calcium or vitamin D, but it helps indirectly. Stronger muscles pull harder on bone, which stimulates bone maintenance. In a two-year study of postmenopausal women, those who took creatine and did resistance training preserved more bone mineral density than those who trained without creatine. It may also act directly on bone cells, improving their energy metabolism. So if you're looking to protect your bones, creatine plus weight-bearing exercise is a smart combo. Now here's a fascinating area, pregnancy. 
your body ramps up creatine supply during pregnancy. Your placenta even synthesizes creatine to help fuel the baby. Animal studies show that supplementing the mother with creatine improves fetal resilience to hypoxia, which is basically low oxygen during birth. In pregnant sheep, creatine supplemented mothers had lambs with better brain outcomes after stressful births. Higher dietary creatine in pregnant women is also linked to a lower risk of pregnancy complications. We don't yet have large-scale human trials, but early evidence suggests that creatine during pregnancy is safe and possibly beneficial. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, talk to your doctor before starting, but the potential here is huge. In postpartum, creatine might help mothers recover strength, improve mood, and even enhance breast milk creatine levels for the baby. During perimenopause, estrogen fluctuates wildly. Many women report fatigue, brain fog, mood swings, and muscle loss. This is arguably when creatine becomes even more valuable, helping offset muscle loss, supporting mood and cognition, and improving workout quality. While no large trial has targeted perimenopausal women yet, experts are calling for it. Given what we know from younger and older women, the rationale is strong. Creatine helps you stay strong, sharp, and energetic through midlife and beyond. And after menopause, the benefits on muscle, bone, and possibly memory continue. So how should you actually take it? As far as dosing is concerned, for most women, three to five grams of creatine monohydrate daily. That's it. You can do an optional loading phase, 20 grams a day split into four doses for a week to saturate your muscles faster, then drop to three to five grams per day. But loading isn't necessary if you're patient. It just speeds things up. As far as timing, it doesn't matter much. Morning, night, before or after workouts, whatever you'll remember. Some people feel it mixes better with food or a protein shake. In terms of type, just get plain old creatine monohydrate. Avoid fancy for her marketing or overpriced variants. Monohydrate is the gold standard. Regarding duration, you don't need to cycle off. You can take it year round. If you stop, your body just gradually returns to baseline over a few weeks. And lastly, safety. For healthy women, creatine is safe even over years of use. Studies on women, including pregnant and older populations, found no adverse effects on kidneys, liver, or hormones at recommended doses. If you already have kidney disease, however, make sure you talk to your doctor. All right, so let's knock down some myths. Myth number one, creatine makes you bloated. Incorrect. Creatine pulls water into your muscle cells, not under your skin. Studies show it improves cellular hydration and phase angle without increasing fat or visible bloating. Number two, Creatine makes you bulky or masculine. Absolutely not. It doesn't change your hormones. It just lets you train harder. Any muscle you gain will look lean and toned, not bulky. And myth number three, creatine hurts your kidneys. In healthy people, decades of data show no damage to the kidneys at standard doses. The confusion comes from creatinine levels on blood tests, which rise slightly because creatine converts to creatinine, not because your kidneys are failing. So what's the bottom line? For women at any life stage, Creatine is a safe, effective supplement that supports stronger muscles, sharper mind, better mood and sleep, healthier bones, smoother recovery, and potentially even pregnancy outcomes. It's one of the most studied supplements out there, and yet women have been largely left out of the conversation, until now. And if you're looking for edge in your workouts, resilience through hormonal changes, or just a little more energy and vitality, creatine is worth considering. It's affordable, easy to take, and backed by mountains of research. So the next time you see that tub of white powder on the shelf, don't write it off as just for guys. It might be one of the smartest tools for your health and longevity. And if you found this helpful, hit subscribe. And as always, I thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing the next one. Thanks.